Why do we deprive ourselves rest when we need it the most? Why is it that when we're finally existing in pockets of rest, we get so full of shame that we're now not even able to enjoy it? We live in a time where everyone has glorified the grind. Everyone seems to be existing on a highway, going somewhere very fast. And after a while of being swept into this fast-moving traffic myself, fully influenced to stay in motion to reach this destination that I can hardly see. That I have finally taken an exit to tell you, there is nothing glorious about the grind. After observing it all, the truth is, when the goal is to live in your authentic truth, when the goal is to stand out by being the only thing you can be, which is your raw, authentic self, the act of doing this expands you. And when you expand, you lead in your life. You attract others who resonate with your authentic self so much that you can exit this freeway and coast because you have a confidence in who you are that you will make it to your destination. Or because larger vehicles go farther faster. And fun enough, in your expanded state, it will require less effort, less energy. Because the confidence inside you that knows the destination doesn't carry anxieties about the pace. Confident people know when to rest. I'm making this video because I believe in your ability to make it all happen and to give you the reassurance that there's more than one way to move forward, more than one way to thrive. You can do it, all of it, and do it well when you finally realize that rest isn't just a bodily function. Rest is vital to the journey. Rest is revolutionary. Rest is your divine birthright. So, get yourself comfortable, grab yourself something cozy to drink, and let's create dialogue that you can come back to anytime you're trying to get in states of rest that the subconscious mind is not allowing you to enjoy, because you're worthy of it, and I love you. Welcome to the Ron Hat Podcast, where we get real and then some. I'm your host, Jasmine Siri, and every week I will speak on topics that align with reprogramming the subconscious mind. I share my experiences and discuss how I navigate life consciously so we can reach higher heights and deeper dimensions of the mind to reach our goals from a healed and open place together. So let's get started. Intention and vision will always supersede the pace because really, where are you going, girl? Where are you going? And if you don't know, why are you moving so fast? To anyone that is in a season of their life that feels unsure or uneasy, what I mean by that is, if where you are now feels like a transition period, maybe you're doing something you once thought you wanted to do for your entire life, and now that you've been blessed with the opportunity to do that thing, you know now for sure that it ain't it. I want to tell you, Congratulations, because you're one step closer to finding out what it is. And when you're in this space of discomfort, naturally you want to hurry up and figure it out. You think where you are is starting from scratch, not even acknowledging the important chapters behind you because of how this new one has begun. Even though you feel you're at the bottom in your journey, because you're uncomfortable there, you assume speeding up and doing things at a rapid pace, climbing up this imaginary ladder will help get you out. But that is just not the case. And on top of that, you're wasting your energy by assuming that faster will get you farther. In some cases, it can. In this metaphysical space, it does not. I want to reassure you that it is the perfect time to be exactly where you are right now. This moment is where you belong despite the discomfort. For example, this season of my life is pretty uncomfortable from what I'm used to doing. Starting a YouTube channel, doing a podcast, being consistent with doing that, setting expectations for myself, meeting those expectations, not in a perfect way, but in a consistent way, is breaking new barriers for myself. I'm being stretched in ways I never thought of. I figured that maybe if I grind, grind, grind and speed up my pace and work harder, it would cut my time of being in this uncomfortable place in half. But 
Unfortunately, I don't think that's how the divine works. I won't be in a different place until it is time and until I am ready. And it doesn't mean not to do the work, but it does mean that if this is where I'm meant to be right now, then I can rest. The only thing that will get me to where I want to be is my ability to be present in the here and now. And unfortunately, when I'm rushing and when I'm overdoing it, I'm not able to be present. I'm not even able to bring my desires closer to me as much as I think that that's what I'm doing. The desperation and anxiety is still outside of the frequency that I need to get me to where I need to be. So what do we do? We love ourselves enough to prioritize rest and develop a structure that is steady and consistent that allows quality work to happen through us. In order for us to maintain integrity and quality, we have to live and be okay with life happening and keep our feet to the ground. That happens when you're just being human, not hyper fixating on the right and wrong ways to be human. Because I got to tell you, you know, I love mindset content. I love reading a lot of books with different thought innovators in my journey. But at the same time, there's something really genius about just existing and just being and being honest with yourself about where you are right now. And I think when we have an opportunity to be honest with ourselves in the moment, we're able to be of service in more ways because it's from a real and authentic place. I can't write a book on how to be the perfect way. You know, I can't write a book about how to respond in the most perfect ways, especially dealing with anger or anxiety. But what I can do is give an honest answer about the ways that I feel and ways that I've gotten through. And instead of repeating other things that other people have said about the many great ways you can do a specific thing, maybe my voice, my way, and the ways that I express myself is something that I can add to the pot of just more ways that people can feel good. And I'd rather add my name to the pot and be this fresh voice or this fresh mind, a part of the conversation, reaching this different layer of helping people than regurgitating all of the knowledge that I've learned. Because even though I've read some of the books and I've really digested some of the chapters, I still have a full life of experiences that I have grown through that I feel like are a little bit more grounded and realistic because I am an ethnic black woman and sometimes people have to hear that layer of raw authenticity to feel like they're not alone. And also, this is another example. I hate to be that girl, but do you remember the movie Hercules, like the Disney Channel movie, right? In the story where Hercules was finally stepping into his power and building his career of being a hero, all of the works that he was doing and the pace and his popularity still wasn't enough or the type of work that could shift his frequency to exist on Mount Olympus to live with his father as a god. He had to express and experience real love and pain and walk through the valley of death in like this selfless act to rescue the woman that he loves to finally become you know as much as his influences wanted to keep him engulfed in his work to meet his goal he needed the groundedness of just being swept by love and the drama of betrayal and the things that only happen in real life that gave him this defining moment, you know? So when it comes to us and the very human stories that we have inside of us, I would say life is just so precious and it can happen to us while we're building these so-called lives of our dreams. And those are the very things that happen to us that make life worth living, like 
love, like a family, friendships, children, heartbreak that grow us and stretch us into better ways to understand this life that we live in. So in this moment, I just want to encourage people to be present enough to allow yourself to have it all. The good, the bad, you know, because that's what it means to really be human. Have that love interest that helps you unpack more things about yourself. Apply for that new position at your job because it's scary and it could also stretch you in ways you never imagined. Start that YouTube channel and allow the journey to consume you. And for me, rest was something that I could not allow to happen to me. I wasn't even able to connect with the people in my life and in, in my journey because I was so busy working. If I didn't have time to rest, I definitely didn't have time to experience joy and just random moments with the people that I loved or put effort towards nurturing the relationships with the people that I love. I wasn't even nurturing the relationship with myself. And isn't it a shame that you know, in our journeys or as we become adults and we try to make plans with the people that we care about, it's like we both are on this like same accord of like, we're both really busy, so it may work, it may not work out. And it just takes that extra layer of like putting in the work to say, you know what, let's plan this, let's do that. And I struggle with that because I'm struggling with this relationship with myself. It's so easy to neglect myself, which is why I neglect my really important relationships and I try not to do it, but because it's so easy for me, I like to blame it on my work and my jobs and my YouTube channel and all of the things that are keeping me away from actually having a life. And it's like, I do have a life. I do have things that I enjoy, but I am in this grind mode that I just explained was complete and total bullshit. But because I thought that I needed to exist in this masculine state all the time, I took a step back and realized, you know what? I'd rather have more memories with my new friends that I'm making in Austin. I'd rather have more memories with this partner that I'm able to experience right now. I'd rather have more memories with my family as I'm aging and getting older and discovering new things about myself as a woman. Some roads in our life will require us to have a different speed limit, to stay at a different pace. This is for protection. This is for presence. This is our safety. I remember when I mistook God slowing me down for holding me back. I was so in denial, so filled with disappointment in this era that I thought I was being punished. And then I started pivoting into different directions that was nowhere near what I should have been doing. I was acting more to prove myself worthy when in reality I was already worthy. I should have rested in that. I should have accepted where I was or where I was placed. Instead, I thought I had a better idea. I thought that my idea was much more nice than the God that created me, so I just continued pushing this needle that really wasn't going anywhere, but because I was exerting a lot of my energy, it felt like something. I wasn't willing to accept that I needed to slow down to hear God's whisper for my next step, because I, I didn't like hearing the fact that he told me to slow down in the very first place. The season that I was slowed meant that I needed to pay more attention to detail, not that what I was doing was wrong. There was something for me to learn, and my ego completely got in the way for a while. When we're given insight on our next destination, most times it won't be obvious. It won't be this big grand clue or, you know, schizophrenia sometimes. It's... Sometimes just a gentle breeze, and if we're moving too fast, we miss our mark, forcing us to be in some seasons longer until we finally understand. You know, before I started my podcast, or before it was even a thought in my mind that this was something I even wanted, 
I spoke into a microphone for years for my job. Like seven years, I was speaking in a microphone and like doing all the things. And so many people would compliment my voice and tell me they enjoyed it. But I just wanted to be an actress. I'm like, okay, yeah, cool, thank you. And then I started voice acting. And then I read audiobooks. And then I was like, wait, like I also have something to say too. And there is a world that I wanted to create where people who thought like I did felt safe. And then that was my light bulb. That was my moment. And then I realized that if I got everything I wanted in the past, this amazing acting career with all of these opportunities in the middle of nowhere, Texas, that I stay in in Austin, if I got everything I wanted then, if I didn't slow myself down enough to rest in my present moment where I was being stretched or I was being planted, seeded into my purpose, I don't know where I would be. Like everything slowed down for my good. I was able to finally honor my strengths and allow them to work for me and develop a plan of how it could work for me. You know, I wouldn't be here before you today if I didn't actually experience the things that have halted me and slowed me down. So I just want to thank God for just that amount of rest and restoration for me to actually slow down and realize where my life was going. And we talk about the pandemic a lot and all of the ways that it's affected us. The pandemic was such a holy period of my life. I experienced so much transformation, so much clarity, but still zero motion. Like, just imagine like having all of these ideas, like, but still being so insecure, needing validation from other people in my life to like talk about it so much to really build this confidence that none of it was working because I still didn't do much until year, a year later. But it was like, I was a fully planted seed. It was like I saw this vision. I saw this vision for myself and I was so afraid by it that I needed to develop it for a little while. And then I just started opening my mouth and everything happened at the perfect time. But it was almost like the pandemic was created so that a path could be cleared before me so that I could be able to do this thing that I really enjoy, that I want to be really good at, that I'm trying my best to stretch myself for. And I'm just so happy to be here. So I appreciate you all so much for just allowing me to be a voice and allowing me to use my voice and making this a safe space for me to exist in. I know I say that every episode, but it's really important, you know, moving on. But the pandemic was an opportunity for God to restore me so I can really get a level head about where my life was going. I was being restored from the times where I was working multiple jobs. I was trying to survive the pandemic and surviving inflation. And then this renaissance of creativity came about that changed the entire entertainment industry forever. I was just slowly seeing myself in the center of all of that. And the slowing down for the past three years had to happen because in those years, the entire world changed. It was as if a path was being cleared for me. I know that on the other side of rest and the time of restoration, you will see your path unfold as well. And it's so funny, in the past, so three years ago, you know, kind of post the pandemic and where people were just trying to get their life back in order and get some regularity to their routine, to their finances, I found this clarity. I knew exactly what I should have been doing. I knew exactly what I needed to do, but it still required me to work in the same ways that I had been. Maybe a little bit more because I had more direction and I had more vision but I have to remember the rest that I experienced before I gained all of this clarity. 
it's important for me to have rest because rest is where I find clarity. Rest is where I hear the subtle voice that is guiding me. And if I continue to move, if I keep going and forget to rest, I'll be existing in my ego and honestly, I'll probably end up in a place I have to make a U-turn around and get me back on track with. So slow and steady, pace yourself. And it's so hard, especially with social media. You see so many people's lives change in an instant, it seems. And I will say like, A lot of people that I look up to, and I am a creator and I want to create online for a living, people are investing years into developing a craft of being a creator on YouTube. This is not something you just explode overnight in if you have a vision for it. Some people that don't expect to, you know, be these creators, they do it, it works for them, they find careers, that's how God is working in their life. But for the people that are intentional about just wanting to do a specific thing in the creative space, it will take time to develop, period. It'll take time. And don't judge yourself for where you are. If you want to start, if this is something that you want to do, start now. Just do it and then do it some more and then do it again. And after a while, things will get easier. You'll start to build a platform for yourself. And after that, sky's the limit. You know, just get over the hump. If I can do it, you can do it too. And I know that because I know the type of person that I am. You don't really know the type of person that I am. But I say this because I know who I am. And if I'm doing it... You for sure can do it, okay? Stop and smell the roses. 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 Like, mmm. Let's say your version of success is like you making your own garden. Why do you have a garden? Is it so other people can enjoy and dazzle in all of your hard work? Or... Do you have a garden because it's something you enjoy? Because what's the point of making anything beautiful in our lives if we are not the first to enjoy it? You know, my partner just recently expressed to me that I'm not even enjoying my journey half as much as I should. And when this is happening, not only am I concerned about my garden, but I'm also focusing on his garden too because I've convinced myself that we both have to be building our gardens at the same time and at the same pace, not even considering that maybe what he's planting and tending to has a different harvest season than my own. And my ego doesn't just want to smell my own flowers, it needs to smell his flowers as well and it's just bringing a lot of judgment and fear and unease and all of the things that make relating hard because I can't smell my own roses I'm not even creating a healthy foundation for my friendship for my partnership and this is where working and grinding gets unhealthy this is where it's not It's not doing any good for you if your mental health is on the decline, you know? If you can't reach your goals and still have your own spiritual sovereignty, your own mental sanity, what is the point? Why do you feel like you can't have both? It's so funny because... Well, it's not funny. I will say this. The people that reach their destination and lose their minds are totally responsible for that. It's all the choices that they made. Unfortunately, culture doesn't necessarily give us tools and give us the platform to take care of ourselves because they just want us to consume and work and consume and work and... Unfortunately, if you're not aware, you can get sucked into some gnarly stuff mentally. But you have the power over how deeply you are investing in yourself. And we assume that rest is not an investment. You took 
two or three courses that cost $300 trying to teach you how to get rich in like three months and you still haven't gone on vacation. Why? You still haven't taken a break. Why? It's like nothing is going to be enough because you're going to get all of those things and get all of those accolades and those certifications and the pay raise and all of those things and you're not going to know how to take care of yourself in those things. And some people sit and rot and they're still unfulfilled because nothing is going to change when you get more money. Nothing's going to change when you get that house, get that partner, get that job. If you're not developing healthy practices and prioritizing rest in your life right now, when shit hasn't even really popped off yet, how do you expect that to happen when money comes into your pocket? Like, it, it, you assume that you're just going to be like, oh, I vacation, but no. You're too in scarcity mindset to believe you deserve it, so you're not going to give it to yourself. Am I right? I know I am, because I'm, I'm just playing. But you know it's true. Different levels, different devils, right? And because those things are so new, and we're trying to reach that other level, we forget that we're still that person. We're still that person that needs love. We're still that person that needs rest. We're still that person that deserves grace. And if we can't give it to ourselves... We're not going to receive it from anything or anyone else. Stop and smell the roses, for real. And then when I thought about this, I had to really unpack, like, what was that defining moment in my life that made me feel like nothing I did was enough? You know, and there can be things from my childhood, but I don't really remember, you know? I think my most recent experience was in my past of a relationship, and my Maybe a little bit messy by saying this, but I just remember hearing the voice of a man from my past that honestly masked his desire for male companionship by making every woman in his romantic life feel like they were not woman enough because they didn't work and have the hustle of a man. And I bring this up because I think there's a voice and an enemy in all of us that creeps in and that forces us to move, to do more, to move faster and more competitively. And whoever the voice is, whenever it comes, I want to remind you that you are its master. Nothing can affect you without your permission. So when we decide to rest we prevail. And then when we hear the voice again in the midst of our rest, we do it anyway and with more audacity to exist in the blessing that our ancestors never got to experience but worked so hard for. It's for us to feel and believe that we are worthy of being free, of having a day, of receiving rest, and I think the more that you think about it, deep down, you'll be like, dang, like, why do I start to itch every time I sit down for a couple of days and I'm not making any money? Why do I feel so worthless if money isn't coming in? What does that tell me about myself when I'm not working to live, I'm just living, you know? I think deep down, to know God is to know rest. It's knowing that we are covered. So we should carry peace in our hearts and a knowing that even in our rest, we're doing God's will. Even in our restoration, we are worthy of promotion. We're worthy of opportunity. We're worthy of good things. We're worthy of just being acknowledged for all of the work that we've done. And on that note, I'm taking my butt to bed, y'all. It is 1 a.m. 
and I'm tired. I love talking to you guys, but it's time for me to rest. Thank you all so much for making it to this far into the episode. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram at jasmine.siri. You can also listen to this audio on Spotify and Apple Podcasts at the Ron Half Podcast. And I will see you all in my next video.